Right, now the next stage of our practical is we're going to do an acid alkali titration. We're going to be using our, standardized, our standard solution of sodium hydroxide, which we're then going to be titrating against hydrochloric acid. Now, to do this, we're going to put hydrochloric acid into our burette. Okay? Now, this needs to be done in such a way okay, that you are not working too high above eye level okay, uh, for your own safety. Okay? Now we're using a funnel into our burette. It doesn't matter if we go, if we're not aiming to get it exactly on zero. If it's above, if it's, if it's slightly below, it doesn't matter, okay, because we, we're going to be able to work out what that starting point is. Okay, so I'm going to pour our HCO, having made sure that the tap at the bottom of the burette is shut, so that we do not get hydrochloric acid all over the bench. Now, okay, now I have filled up my hydrochloric acid, okay. I'm now going to take another beaker because, although I'm now, you know, although I filled it up and it's slightly above the zero, okay, there will be slight air bubbles in the tap. So I'm going to run some of the hydrochloric acid out to make sure that all the air bubbles have been removed. That has left me, okay, with a starting titer which has to be read at eye level, okay. If the line is above or below eye level, you will not get a true line on the meniscus. The meniscus needs to be in line of sight with your eye. The meniscus is the little curved bubble at the top of our solution. Okay? Now, burettes can be read to 0.005. Okay? So, 0, so 005 would be that the bottom of the bubble is halfway between two of the smaller lines. In this case, our starting line is 1. Point, sorry, is, is 1.4 exactly. Okay? Because the bottom of the line is exactly on the fourth line below the 1. Having done that, we're going to then get our sodium hydroxide solution done. We're going to take our sodium hydroxide solution from our volumetric flask and decant it into a beaker. Using our pipette and pipette filler, we're going to accurately measure 25 centimeter cubed of our solution and transfer that into our conical flask. To accurately measure it, we need again that the meniscus um, of the solution to be exactly on the fill line on the burette, on the pipette, which you may or may not be able to see. They're not particularly, they're not particularly clear on this one because they're engraved in. So, we're going to put our pipette filler onto our pipette. We're going to hold our pipette near the end, okay, that we're going to put the, pip the, the pipette on, pipette filler on, and we're just going to slightly slide the pipette filler in. Okay, it's only going in a very small amount, okay, till it's held, okay. We do not want, okay, the pipette to go beyond this T, or even to the T, okay, because that will stop the up and down mechanism in the pipette from working. The pipettes are labelled A, S and E. A at the top is the one we squeeze, we push together and we squeeze the ball to get all the air out of it. S, the one in the middle, is for suck, and that means it's going to suck up the liquid. And the E on the side is the one we press for emptying, for lowering the level on our, in our pipette. Okay, so once we squeeze the air out while pushing A, we then very carefully place our pipette in to our solution. The pipette needs to be below the, the level of our, below the top level of our solution, but not touching the bottom. We're then going to draw up our solution using the pipette. If the pipette stops sucking, it means that we'll need to squeeze it again and put more air, uh, squeeze more air out of the solution. Once again, we're going to very carefully make sure 
that by putting it at eye level that our meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, is on the line, which it is in this case. We're then going to transfer our pipette into our conical flask and push the E on the pipette filler. All the time we're doing this, we are making sure that we have hold of the glass pipette because we do not want the pipette to drop because if it does, it will either break the beaker, the conical flask, or the pipette itself, or all of them. Okay. When it has finished emptying, okay, we can let go of the pipette and we can take it out. There will always be a tiny amount of solution left in the pipette. The pipette is calibrated for this, so you do not have to try and get the tiny little amount left out. But this is why, when we're using pipettes, we must rinse it with distilled water in between, because that amount could affect um, our, end, our end point. So, we have our sodium hydroxide, okay, which you'll notice is in a small label beaker, okay, and we have our hydrochloric acid. Now, we're going to determine the end point of this practical using an indicator. The indicator that we're going to be using is phenothaline. Okay? This is an indicator that is, has two colour states, one of which is a clear colourless, and the other is a bright pink. We're going to add a few drops of phenothaline okay, into our solution. I've added five drops. Okay? There is no need to add more. Okay? The indicator is very sensitive and as you can see has turned this solution bright pink because it is an alkali. Okay? So the end point going in reverse with the acid the point of neutralization will be when the pink just disappears. Now when we are doing a titration, okay, we are the first one that we do, we will do this multiple times. The first one we do is what we call a quick or rough titration, which means that we are trying to determine approximately where um, our solution or, or our endpoint is. Once we've determined that, we will be able to do fine titrations, which are more accurate, and hopefully be able to get three concordant results within plus or minus of point 0.1 of each other. And so, to do our titration, we have to make sure that there is sufficient room for us to be able to comfortably move our flask under the nib of the burette, okay, without snapping the burette. We're going to hold the flask with one hand and swirl it gently round while with the other hand we operate the burette. Now we started at 1.4 centimeters cubed. Okay. Now I'm just going to quickly run this through so that we get a rough idea of where our end point is. Now you'll notice that the indicator will start to weaken. and may almost disappear completely and reappear. This is as the solution, uh, or as the reaction occurs between the sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid. So the end point for this is when it is clear and it stays clear. Now you'll notice I'm just running a few centimetre cubed at a time through and then pausing to allow it to mix and then doing the same again. Right, so we now have had the solution has gone clear. Now it has gone clear at 21.1 centimetre cubed. Now if we take our initial reading from this final reading, okay, we will end up with our what's called as a titer, which is the amount of fluid we have used in the reaction. So our start was 1.4 and our final was 21.1, which will give us a, nine, a titer of 19.7. Okay, and then we would, what we would do is we would, re, we would repeat this, 
Okay, so we would take our flask, we're going to get rid of the excess solution. We are then going to use distilled water to rinse out our flask to remove any traces of the last experiment. And we're going to go through it again. So we're going to fill up our burette okay, with hydrochloric acid. Now this time we do not need to get rid of any air bubbles because we have not emptied the burette completely. However, I have gone slightly over zero, so it's going to have to come down a bit. So we are starting. So again, I'm going to bring it down so I can see the meniscus, because it is above my eye level. And the meniscus is at 0 0.1. I'm now going to again pipette out my 25 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide, following exactly the same method putting the pipette below the level of the solution, emptying out the pipette filler of air, and then using the suck button to draw up the fluid into the pipette. I'm then going to check that, so check that with my at eye level that my meniscus is on the line, which it is. Okay, and then I'm going to use the empty button to empty out the sodium hydroxide into the conical flask. And then put again, put our glass for aside, making sure that it isn't able to roll off the edge of the bench. We're going to add, again, about five drops of phenothaline, our indicator. Okay, making sure not to get it everywhere. Okay. We check that we have sufficient clearance again for us to be able to do the to be able to do the practical and then repeat. Now we know that it went around 21. So this time, okay, we can, we know we're starting at point one. The last time it went around about 21. So we can run it fast, just gently agitating it till we are sort of around about the 18, 19 mark, at which point we can slow down. So it's around about 19. So I've now just stopped. I'm just gonna let it rest. I'm now going to set the, the tap ooh, just, ooh, just shy of pink. It's just shy, it's still slightly pink. I'm now going to add, drop at a time, until the solution changes colour. Okay? And as we've seen now, it has gone completely colourless. But this time, rather than just doing a quick rough, we have a much, much more accurate reading. So the last title we said was an overall of 19.7. So we went fast to around about 18, just shy of 19, and then drop by drop from then on. We were, therefore, we were able to say that that drop is the point at which the colour changed. We started at 0.1. We have a finish of 19.4, which gives us an accurate titer of 19.3. We would then be able to repeat this in exactly the same manner until we get three what's called concordant results. So they are plus or minus 0.1 mil, or centimetre cubed.